Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Star Trek Online, the episodic series. This series is going to be a normal occurrence here on the Friday Night Channel as we delve deep into each Star Trek Online episode cinematically. Characters in these episodes will also be voiced by the Vulcan Science Academy community on the Discord and voice actors from the game. Uh, these episodes, written by Paul Reed, Deanna Sherman, and Michael Stemmel, provide the central backbone of STO's storyline, which takes place 30 years after Star Trek Nemesis. Today's episode will be titled Diplomatic Orders, as it is technically the first mission we play in Star Trek Online. Ooh, transporter. So with enough talk, let's get into this episode. Space, the final frontier. These are the episodes of the Starship Braveheart. It's continuing the mission to provide assistance to potential allies or to seek potential foes. To protect the Federation at all cost. Captain, we've arrived at the Vulcan system. I took the liberty of contacting the Ambassador's aide when we arrived. Tapila says that the Ambassador has certain arrangements that he prefers when traveling. She would like to go over them with you. On screen. Greetings. Thank you for agreeing to escort the Ambassador to Pajem. Ambassador Soketh is currently attending a ritual to honor the end of the Call Rec holiday. He will be done soon, but the Ambassador is hesitant to use transporter technology. His bias against the transporters is not logical, but I have come to accept it. Believe that Soketh would be much more comfortable traveling by shuttlecraft. I have received clearance for you to land near the Ambassador's location. I look forward to meeting you in person. We are ready to land on Vulcan, sir. When you are ready to make our final approach, let me know. Starfleet Shuttlecraft, this is Vulcan Orbital Control. You are cleared to land at the requested coordinates. Welcome to Vulcan. Please enjoy your stay. Captain, the Ambassador and his aide are waiting for you at the top of the rise. You can speak to them there and find out if the Ambassador needs anything else from us before we depart for Pajem. Acknowledged.
Captain, I regret to inform you that we have come to an impasse in completing your mission. Allow me to explain. As you know, Pajem is sacred to the Vulcan people, and access to it is strictly prohibited. Ordinarily, this would not present any difficulty, but Savin, the leader of the order that maintains the monastery, in this moment to illogically refuse to grant Ambassador Soketh permissions to meet with the abbot at Pajem. This is most abnormal. I wonder why Sabin won't grant the Ambassador permission. The Ambassador, I'm afraid, has spent too much time off-world. I have seen it change him. His interactions with other species have grown easier over the years, but our own people have become more challenging for him to deal with. Perhaps you could speak to Sabin. I know he has a great deal of respect for Starfleet, and you might have an easier time than he has in convincing him to grant the Ambassador's request. Let me speak to Sabin then. Peace and long life. Do you seek knowledge of the Ancestors? Sarketh says you won't permit him to visit Bajem. Sarketh accuses me of abandoning logic, but he is the one refusing to explain his reasons for wanting to go to Bajem. The planet is sacred. Our ancestors walked those paths. They found understanding and serenity in its quiet. When I am at Bajem, I feel more at peace than any place else in the galaxy. The Federation is at war. Now, more than any other time, we must protect this refuge. Centuries ago, the Vulcans were creatures of emotion. We fought one another in a series of wars that devastated our planet. Our species was on the brink of annihilation. Serac taught us to embrace peace and to put aside our emotions in favor of logic. Serac ushered in a time of awakening on Vulcan. His writings, the Kirshara, shaped all that we are. Without Serac, the Vulcans you know would not exist. Is there any way I can persuade you to allow Sokef to visit Pajem? I will permit it if you will pledge to me, on your honor as a Starfleet officer, that you will protect Pajem from harm. Sokef says his reasons for wanting to speak to the Abbot are private. I will accept that, but only if you are with him. I know I can trust Starfleet. Please, protect Pajem from any who would violate its sanctity. Helm, this is the captain. I want you to set a course for Pajem. We will be heading back to the shuttle shortly. Acknowledged. Welcome to Vulcan. I've spoken to Seven. Why doesn't he trust you? How should I know? He is a small man with small concerns. Thankfully, he has listened to reason and our journey won't be delayed any longer. I am ready to leave now. Is the shuttle prepared for departure? Live long and prosper. Starfleet Shuttlecraft, we have logged your flight trajectory, and you are cleared for departure. Live long and prosper. The Braveheart has plotted a course to Vision 1 at warp 6. All systems functioning within normal parameters. Estimated time to location, 7 hours. Unusual energy reading in the system. We should scan the system before we take the ambassador to the surface. Sir, Klingon ships are decloaking! There will be 
no escaping our vengeance this time! are hailing this vessel. Cease your fire, Captain! Perhaps today is a day for words. My fellow captains were blinded by our vengeance toward the shapeshifter aboard your vessel. They have died with honor! But if I am to die this day, then I would prefer to regale the halls of Stovokor with the tale of that foul creature's death. Shapeshifter? Ha! So even the mighty Federation has been fooled by the beast. Your guest from Vulcan is not as he or she seems, Captain. They are an Undine. They put on a false face and try to control us, but we Klingons know better. We will hunt them down until the last of these honorless dogs dies screaming. An Undine? Have you any proof? Proof? Pah! Allow me to stick a blade in its belly while I look it in the eye while it dies. That should be proof enough, even for Starfleet. I'll take that into consideration. If you wish the honor of the kill yourself, then it is yours to have. So long as the Undine dies, I will meet my death with eyes wide open and victory in my heart. I await your decision. Close hailing frequencies! Captain, the Undine come from a dimension known as fluidic space. They use quantum singularities to move into ours. I'm afraid much of their technology still remains a mystery to us, but one thing is for certain, it is not to be underestimated. So why use a Starfleet vessel? That I can't say, Captain. But as the Undine are virtually unknown in the Beta Quadrant, my guess is that they are aiming to conceal their presence here. And the Klingons? What the Klingons are saying could be true, Captain. If the Undine are in the Beta Quadrant, it might just be that the Klingons sniffed them out before us. In this case, the enemy of my enemy. Is my friend. Sir, the Klingon vessel is awaiting your response. I believe the Klingons are quite urgent on this matter. Do you want me to bring Captain Katak on the view screen? First, bring up the ambassador on the view screen parallel to Captain Katak of the Klingon vessel. Let's settle this. My patience is growing thin, Captain. If you lack the stomach to slay the beast aboard your vessel, then any Klingon here would gladly do it for you. I'd hate for you to stain that pretty Starfleet uniform with Undine blood. Very generous, but unnecessary. Then the beast is slain? Makka! Very good! Perhaps you've the heart of a warrior after all. Let me look upon our enemy, and tonight we will dine together as warriors and drink to the honored dead. Accused, meet your accuser. Captain, I take my meditations very seriously. Why have I been summoned? Alive? You're a fool, Captain! Strike now before it's too late! Ambassador, allow me to explain. There's no need, Captain. The situation is not difficult to unravel. My concern lies in the logic of you entertaining this Klingon's meritless claim. Meritless, but not unreasonable. A most illogical conclusion. Allow us to examine the facts, Captain. You have a crippled Klingon vessel, whose captain has made unsubstantiated claims that I am an Undine a species that is known to both the Federation and the Klingon Empire as a considerable threat. Thus, a reasonable consideration. Potentially, but only if a great many other factors were to be true. 
Is it not much more likely that the Klingons have, in the face of defeat, instead sought to exploit Starfleet's desire for peaceful resolutions to conflict in order to repair their vessel and renew their assault? Status of the Klingon vessel. Weapons inoperable. Warp drive is still offline. Wait. I'm detecting an energy surge. They're engaging their cloaking device. Red alert. Lock weapons. A true warrior strikes without mercy, Captain. I only hope to teach you this lesson personally before the Undine does. We may not be able to best your vessel, but a Klingon knows many roads to victory. The beast may have evaded my vengeance for now, but I can still ruin its plans here at Pajem. Fire! I've lost them on sensors, Captain. They're gone. Scan the area. Captain, I'm detecting energy signatures on Pajem's surface. They're in the vicinity of the monastery and they appear to be transporter signals. Life signs indicate they're Klingon. I'm taking an away team down. Ambassador Sakef, remain on the ship until we get this settled. A wise precaution. Though I admit I am eager to see my people safe, I will await word until the monastery is secured. And Captain, let not my journey here be for naught. Captain, we need to secure the area and then make our way toward the monastery, which is located at the top of the hill. I'm reading multiple Klingon patrols between us and the main building, sir. Recommend we proceed with caution. Stay alert. We need to find the monks. It is fortunate that you have arrived. The Klingons seek an Undine infiltrator and are surrounding the monastery in their search. Sir, we're receiving an alert from Vulcan. Tapella says she must speak to you immediately. I'll patch her through with your tricorder. I have terrible news. Vulcan security forces have discovered the body of Ambassador Soka. They have determined that he was killed by a phaser blast at short range. His remains were discovered in a stasis chamber, hidden in a cavern beneath the Ambassador's residence. The Ambassador on your ship, the one that I have been working for, is an imposter. You need to be very careful. This imposter was able to fool Sokes' closest associates for months. He is crafty and very patient. Now that he has been discovered, he will be dangerous. Captain, security teams have reached Ambassador Sockett's quarters, but he's gone. They're searching the ship, but... Sir, unauthorized use of the transporters detected. The Vulcan government is requesting that the Imposter Sockets be detained and returned to Vulcan for questioning. Sir, whoever used the transporter erased the logs, but I have a feeling that the Imposter is on the planet's surface. I recommend we locate him immediately. We'll find him.
such emotion on your face. I see now my deception has been exposed. Pity. Capturing the abbot so we could replace him as well would have been beneficial. But we are strong. We will prevail. You are weak, and the weak shall perish. Captain, recommend we return to the USS Braveheart and search for the Undine ship. We need to find the Undine and take it back to Starfleet. Captain, there is an Undine ship on an intercept course. All hands, red alert. The Braveheart does not have the ominous to handle Undine attack. Starfleet reports that it is sending ships to assist us, but they are about 60 seconds out. If we target their torpedoes, we might have a chance. Captain Arga. Incoming message from the USS Challenger. This is Captain LaForge of the USS Challenger. Glad to see we made it here in time to lend you a hand. Perhaps you'll return the favor someday. Forge out. The Ambassador was an Undine? I'm afraid their infiltration of the Federation goes much deeper than we realized. Who knows what kind of havoc they could create? Hmm. We have a large number of operations going on in various parts of the galaxy, and we're constantly in need of ships and crew to work at these joint efforts. I've received a report there is a Bolian freighter that is overdue arriving at Earth space dock. It may need assistance. If we have learned anything, it's that we need to take extra precautions of Starfleet security. We cannot let another situation like this go unnoticed. <laughs> 